than we did against Ohio State. But for whatever reason, we didn't capitalize on those opportunities. And that's been the, bigger, the biggest thing this week is let's get better, but we really need to heart more. Or we always do, but let's really focus on the details. You know, if it's a, if the quarterback's supposed to take a five-step drop, take five, not six or seven. If the receiver's supposed to be at 16 yards, be at 16, not 19. If the tailback's supposed to be seven and a half yards deep, be seven and a half yards deep, not six. Because every little thing, especially on offense, if you're not just locked on like that, it, it can look bad like it did on Saturday. And I'm not saying we were good on Saturday, but it wasn't as – looking at the video, it was – somewhat encouraging in that you had a lot of opportunities to make plays, but we didn't capitalize on it. But it's nothing that's not correctable. So to answer your original question, I think it's very realistic to get better each and every week as those, as those younger guys get more and more comfortable. And Isaiah said it yesterday. I mean, he was he is a coaching staff we felt played the best on offense. He was our offense player of the game. And I saw where he said it to you guys in the press conference that he didn't think he played that well. And there were about 20 plays in there that he could have been better on, whether it be technique or assignment, whatever it might be. So that's encouraging when there's it's correctable things. Did the uh, I, I, obviously falling in a hole like that affects your game plan yeah. at some point? But how far did you deviate from that game plan once you guys fell in that hole? We really felt like going into the game that we needed to be stubborn and establish the run game. We knew they were really big up front, their defensive linemen, their front seven, really big and, and really good. Um, we knew 54 was coming back on uh, the nose tackle. We knew he was coming back off an injury. Uh, doubted he was in great shape. So we really wanted to, early in the game, our plan was let's get them Get them going sideways, make them run, get some of our jet sweep going, and then try and wear them down a little bit and then go north-south and go at them. When you go three and out, three and out, three and out, you're down 21 nothing. You kind of got to get away from, okay, let's wear them out. You know, now we got to figure out how we're going to score points and, and get, get in the game. So get back in the game. Uh, so we didn't get away from the run game, but we probably we don't want to throw the ball 56 times or whatever we threw it on Saturday. So that was the biggest thing is we just we still ran the football, but we probably weren't as you know stubborn running the football as much as we we wanted to. You know, we really felt like we had some good things in the plan to run the ball, and we weren't able to uh, you know to execute and get that done, um, which is disappointing. Georgia Tech, I know they've uh, been giving up a lot of points, and they, they struggled especially in the second half last week against Georgia Southern. What, I know you can't give us the game plan, but you know, do you see things on film that you can take advantage of there and the things you can expose? Yeah, you hope so. I mean, you look at them against um, you know Georgia Southern. Georgia Southern's running a similar offense to right. what Georgia Tech's doing, and what they did was they hit some big plays in the passing game. So we got to continue to do that. You know, we hit our receivers. They, they, I thought they took a step forward on Saturday and hit some big plays in the passing game. Georgia Southern hit some where they just. You know, threw the ball over their head, over Georgia Tech's heads, and, and made some plays. But they also had the threat of the run game that those defensive backs from Georgia Tech had to be aware of because Georgia Tech, Georgia Southern, was running the option. You had a quarterback that can make plays with his feet, so they had the threat of the run. Now all of a sudden, Georgia Tech in the second half is having a hard time stopping the run, and now you got the threat of the pass, and they're able to throw the ball over their heads a little bit. You know, so from that game plan, you'd like to say you can copy Georgia Southern and establish the run where they've got to respect the run, and then you can take some shots, you know, down the field, and that's every week. But um, you know, you see them on defense; they're they're good up front. Uh, you know, 96 played against us last year. Uh, 54, the linebacker is a heck of a player. You know, he's an All Conference type player, Neely. Uh, so they're really good. And then it's an older group in the secondary. Uh, so they've played Walford. They've played Georgia Southern. Offense is similar to them. They played Tulane, which is more of a conventional offense. And you watch them against, you know, Tulane. Other than a play here and there, they, you know, kind of throttled Tulane there for most of the game. So we know it'll be a challenge. And, and uh, it's probably good for them to get back to playing a conventional offense. And, and not that it's easier for them, but they look pretty good against Tulane. I spent some time